good morning uh, good morning to all of you good morning from the hearty welcome from the crestworth team so it, uh, how are you all today hope all of you are safe i am doing sure so uh, so today uh, we are crestworth management partners we are a financial services firm which help in uh, small medium and micro enterprises and startups in their financial services everybody knows that today the situation is very different from what we have seen before we are all talking of something called a new normal where there is social distancing and you know you have to maintain so many sanitary and clinical uh, cleaning uh, things so in this new normal or what we call as a new covid or post covid situation or as we are going through covid situation it is important that we keep our mind and body fit very very important is what we all feel today we have rajdeep manwani and ms navin krishna swami to help us understand the mind and the body fitness part and uh, before we before i give the uh, mic to sujat who is our co-founder and director i would like to say a few things about today's uh, webinar uh, structure uh, we we request all the participants to be on mute and in case you have any questions please feel free to type it in the chat box which is there in your screen on the right hand side the questions can be addressed to everyone after the discussions we will be very happy to take all the questions everybody we know everybody has got their own concerns about the situation so that being said enjoy the program thank you so much for coming and over to sujata hi good morning to everybody and uh, welcome to this session uh, just as a round of introduction i am one of the directors at work like navin aparna pointed and uh, we take care of uh, individuals and small businesses uh, take care of their accounting finance and uh, payroll needs um, today we have in our midst uh, dr rajdeep manmani and navin krishna swami uh, both seem to be youth icons because uh, the minute that i sent out the uh, invite a lot of people already said that we take online classes with navin and we already know him and we know how enthusiastic and energetic he is and uh, the others who have uh, had the uh, honor or privilege to have uh, heard rajdeep it makes them very equally glad and happy to be amongst started, us sorry. so um, just as uh, you know we have the privilege of having both of these people today no one has to approve uh, to rajdeep approve. is an academician a trainer a motivational speaker he's also a life coach and a counselor he is uh, his day job is a professor and coordinator at jain university but he wears several hats uh, including helping a lot of uh, people in disability he is a trainer and uh, uh, you know speaker at senior management and leadership forums in companies like bosch intel etc he also has been the recipient of several awards we are very very proud to know that he has been the uh, president's medal award winner for uh, the um, role model uh, for empowerment of persons with disability he has been given special awards from the government of karnataka he has been a body from multiple sources within the rotary international so it is an honor and privilege to have you rajdeep and welcome to this uh, show thank you so much thank you so much um, is a regular uh, you know fitness trainer he is a very enthusiastic dancer he is a trained bharatnatyam uh, exponent and uh, loves talks breathes fitness so uh, between the two of you i think we have a good nice an hour ahead and um, we will start with probably asking a few questions about your own backgrounds and where you are today and then i will let you take on the talk and we will then open it up for uh, questions from the audience um so with that um uh, my questions would be addressed initially to both you and uh, rajdeep and navin i will start with you navin because you are the one who is waiting to start pumping up the adrenaline so um so in a way you know i was thinking about both of you and i was thinking about the similarities that you have and also the dissimilarities you have between the two of you in bollywood terms uh, you are both out of the box because somebody would expect 
a name like Naveen Krishna Swami to be a Madrasi in Bollywood terms and not somebody to be connected with anything connected with fitness. Um, on the other hand, somebody would expect a name like Rajdeep Manwani to be connected with something flowing from business and not academics. So you're both broken the stereotype cast that you know most of us are used to and that is a welcome change. So Naveen, if I may ask you, coming from a traditional South Indian family, how was your introduction to something like fitness? How has your journey been? Uh, okay, so thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, first of all, good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope all of you are doing well and staying safe at home. Um, it, the journey has been really, uh, I would say, like a roller coaster ride. I know, like, born into an Iyengar family, uh, they would obviously expect anybody to become an engineer or a doctor, right? They would obviously want to see me into an IT company. But um, yes, it was a very uh, difficult decision. But from my heart, I just definitely wanted to follow my passion and I wanted to change that into a profession. Um, yeah, so it, it's been a very good journey. And I think it's because of a lot of support from the family. Um, which is why I was able to uh, get into the dance world and see what I can do and how I can become the best. Uh, and then cult happened and then yeah, my passion just became profession and I'm living it every single day. Excellent. So uh, Rajdeep, what about you and from the background that you come from, was it an automatic choice to not get into uh, anything other than business? Uh, was it uh, something that uh, was your passion to get into academia? Because uh, I have personally seen the way you talk, the way you are able to connect with students and uh, your uh, entire uh, interest in, uh, you know, uh, life in uh, particular. So um, would really love to have your insight into what has uh, prompted you to get into academia to get into, I know, I know you're an excellent speaker, you are a distinguished Toastmaster. So probably you can tell us a little bit about that side of your uh, personality as well. So when I was in my 10th standard, uh, I did my ICSC. So I had English, Hindi, and there used to be a six subject. And the six subject which I took was economics. So I was very interested in it. But uh, since I'd lost my eyesight and I couldn't see much right from my 8th standard, I was a little... Uh, I'll start from there and then I'll tell you how I got into teaching. And I was a little jittery whether to take up commerce as a subject or not. First of all, that was that. Because I was interested in economics, I wanted to take up commerce in my first PUC and second PUC. And most of the times in those days, there was not much of computers. There was not much of advancement in the field of technology like it is now. You know, In those days, my sister and my mother used to record cassettes for me. But there was one NGO which was called Abilities, which was run by a person called Mr. Babu Rangaraj. So he, uh, at that time, I used to get some cassettes recorded from him also. And uh, he, at that time, uh, I'd asked him, sir, I want to take commerce, but uh, will I be able to do it? Because most of the blind children in those days were taking up uh, uh, arts. He told me something very interesting at that time. He told me, Rajdeep, somebody is waiting for you to cross the hurdle so that their race can begin. I didn't understand much of it at that time, but when I came home, it struck me, you know, somebody is waiting for you to cross the hurdle so that their race can begin. Might be nobody had taken commerce being a visually impaired at that time, but if I take up commerce, might be 10 years, 15 years down the line, it would be of great help to other children who are also visually impaired. And I'm so glad I took up commerce at that particular point of time, because now if I see, um, in my teaching career, most of the students take up commerce who are visually impaired as their first choice. Now coming to teaching. So once I took up commerce in my first PUC, second PUC, till degree, there was not much. I lost my father during my second BCom. I'd always thought might be commerce, I'll start a business, etc. But in my when I was in my second year BCom, I lost my father. And at that time it changed my perspective. I said, there must be something which I would like to do to do something in society because, and at that time, you know, in my final year BCom, when uh, before I took up MCom, uh, uh, I lost my father in my second BCom, and then my final BCom, then I had to take up MCom. I took up MCom correspondence. I started working as a telephone operator. As I told you, the uh, 
the spheres were very limited for people with visual impairment at that particular point of time. So I took up a job as a telephone operator in Shivananda Electronics. There's a company which makes these handheld metal detectors. But I took up my MCOM over there in Mysore University through correspondence. And even though I was doing my telephone operator's job, in my heart, it used to always pull me. What's the use? I'm just connecting people. What if I could connect hearts? What if I could make a difference in society? And that thought kept gnawing me for those two years till I did my MCOM correspondence, finished my correspondence, got a gold medal. And that very, very strong urge to not be of use only to two or three people in society, but because if you're a teacher, you'll be interacting with at least 80, 100 students every year. And you have a great chance of making a difference. So that's what pulled me on to take up teaching as a profession after my MCOM and I'm here. Wonderful. And you've been with Jane for how long? How many years now? Now 24 years. Wow. And uh, also about your toast yeah. experience, uh, Rajdeep. What? Your Toastmaster experience. Toastmaster experience, that was, <laughs> I joined Toastmasters mainly as a social outlet because I wasn't doing much. I joined it in 2007. There was uh, a friend of mine who's again blind. His name is Justin Phillips. And I told I used to just go to college, come back. I didn't have much of a social circle. So uh, he told there's a club, you know, these Toastmasters, just like the Rotary, they have so many clubs. So there was this club in uh, uh, St. Joseph's Arts and Science College, which is just a stone throw away from my house. I live in Santinagar. So he told, why don't you come in? We meet on Saturdays, at uh, Fridays at 6.30. So just to develop my social connections, because I didn't have a group outside college. I didn't have a friends group outside college. I walked into Toastmasters, I think so in 2007, sometime in March. And then when I walked in, I felt it like a breath of fresh air. You know, the people, the connect, talking, which I love to do. And I'm there now for the past now 13 years. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so Naveen, back to you. Uh, so you started off as a Bharatanatyam dancer and then you moved on. And how did the transition happen to fitness? And uh, I know you were with Zumba some time back. Uh, so how has the transition been from, you know, very traditional Bharatanatyam to, uh, you know, hip hop or whatever they call it these days? I think um, Bharatanatyam, I started when I was in first standard. And I did it till 10th standard. I think only when I jumped into PU, um, I think uh, uh, Rajdeep, I will connect with you here because I also studied in Jain College in Vivi uh, Brown. Uh, so it's, uh, it was a great feeling over there. So there, I obviously got introduced to uh, Bollywood and Western style dancing. And then I started taking part in more of uh, these competitions and inter-college competitions. So that slowly pulled me there uh, because I did Bharatanatyam from so long. I thought I will, you know, have a new flavor in hand so I can try it out. And then I fell in love with that. And then I slowly moved into professional dancing. I joined a professional group where I performed for over uh, eight plus years. And um, yeah, then it became, um, started doing awards. I started doing um, a lot of TV shows. Uh, yeah, that's the transition. Slowly started learning Latin. I think when I got into Zumba, or when I got introduced to Zumba, uh, I did Zumba for over six plus years. Um, I think because of Zumba, I uh, fell in love with Latin. So I, uh, I tried various flavors from Bharatanatyam to contemporary to Bollywood dancing to Latin. And then when I uh, got introduced to one of my dear friends, uh, he pulled me into fitness. Uh, when I slowly started working out, uh, I usually don't like weight. <laughs> I never liked weight. So my only focus was dancing. So I thought maybe because I'm good at it, uh, I should just continue only doing that. But then I slowly realized, realized that only when you get into an uncomfortable zone and then uh, make it a comfortable zone is when you'll start enjoying life more. So I think uh, fitness was one of those and then I got addicted to it and today I think um, that is like a ritual every single day for me. Whether it's at home or whether it's in the center, 
I am sure at least I do some basic exercise every single day, uh, just to be active. Not to. So it's not basically in my mind that I need to build body and have abs. It is more on the daily lifestyle to keep our um, uh, physical and mental uh, well-being, you know, being sane, so that we can just pass every day happy. so while we always you know we are all listening and reading about how uh, the mind and body are all very well connected and uh, we need to keep ensuring that these are working in tandem uh, so somebody tell you rajeep how do you take care of your mental and physical fitness um, you know how have how, how has your day changed from pre covid to post covid because uh, it's almost like you know uh, the definition of bc is changing to not before christ but before corona and after corona so uh, what is your take on you know how your daily routine has changed and how do you take care of physical and mental fitness on a daily basis you're asking me sujatha yes rajdeep hmm my routine is almost the same uh, i mean just that uh, it's not taking classes uh, on uh, offline you're taking it online but uh, my routine starts every day at 4:30 so by 4:30 i get up and by 5 o'clock i sit for meditation for one hour so it's 5 to 6 and then i lie down a little bit at 6:30 from 6:30 to 7 i do pranayam and surya namaskara by 7:15 7:30 that is done and then get back to my teaching i prepare something usually i used to leave to college by around 7:45 8 the classes start by 8:25 and then it goes on till 2:30 3:15 and then i get back home and again prepare for the next day's class and i also take classes for my uh, sometimes in the evening i used to take classes for the ca students so there but now what's happened is the the morning routine remains the same the meditation remains the same the pranayam and the surya namaskara remains the same uh, but now uh, the classes Uh, now thank god we've ended the syllabus but now the classes are more on zoom so we are at home taking classes rather than taking classes going to college interacting with students that's what is important now the routine and why is it important now i told you i start with uh, meditation now it's a very very good practice actually to keep yourself de stress i know you all won't like me for this but research has shown across the globe whether it's the university of leeds whether it's the university of melbourne that sitting in silence for at least 20 to 25 minutes every day has a profound impact on your personality let me talk a little bit of science here you have two parts of your brain your left brain and your right brain the left brain is more your analytical brain which stores all the logic and all that and the right brain is more the imaginative brain which stores the stories and the creativity etc now if any part of your brain is overactive it generally leads to a lot of disturbances now with meditation what happens is it slowly connects the left side and your right side of your brain to give it a more balanced structure so you are not totally logical you are not over creative and over excited all the time correct right? so meditation is a great help at least i know what it has done to me because when i started it was around 2011 i think so in the last 9 years i know what it has done to me but every great researcher scientist creative individual has this routine of sitting in silence whether you talk about ar rahman he'll tell you that his compositions come out of sitting in silence every day for some time albert einstein i don't know if uh, during the last years of his life he wrote a beautiful paper called deep time versus surface time and he used to always say the best in the theory of relativity came out he used to call this time the sacred awe and he used to say that most of my insights came while sitting in silence isaac newton gave the theory of differential calculus only when uh, england was going through a plague and they he sat in silence for hours together so every one of you all if you all can do this one routine at least half an hour sitting in silence i know it will be a little difficult at the beginning your mind will wander you will find it really difficult you will sleep off but that's okay you just stick on to it like dalai lama always says you know he's a beautiful saying he says that if you don't have time you should meditate 
if you have time, you should meditate for half an hour every day. But if you don't have time, you should meditate for one hour every day because you need it more. So if you can sit in silence for some time, you will see that there's a profound change in the way in which you are more peaceful, more calm. And it, it, you, it, you don't expect miracles. It, it doesn't happen over a period of 20 days or 21 days. It may take a year or two, but you'll find a deep sense that you're being taken care of. So that, that's what is important. The sense of security comes in when you meditate over a period of time. So should we start with something like maybe one minute? For most of us, it's... Five minutes, one minute. We can seconds. start as small as one minute. There's a guy called Atomic Habit. Called James Clear. Start with one minute. Straight. And you have a lot of apps nowadays. Right? Shri, Shri Ravi Shankar, Headspace, anything. Deepak Chopra. Just download something. And see, meditation is nothing different. See, you have multiple screens playing in your mind. Because everybody gets confused. What is this meditation? Why should we meditate? What nonsense is this? How do we meditate? It doesn't make sense. So you have multiple screens going on in your mind. Like for example, you have, say like Sujata, you're sitting, you might be having your son in mind, your job in mind. You have some 20, 30 things going on in your mind. What meditation does is, it switches off 20 screens and puts onto one screen. So you can be any meditation. If you take any religion, so the Buddhists say Vipassana, so they concentrate on the breath. We Hindus say Japam, we'll concentrate Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva. You're bringing 20 screens to one screen. Or some people say concentrate on a light on your head. From that one screen, slowly you keep bringing your brain to one screen. And then from one screen, you won't realize it over a period of time, but you'll slip into silence. You'll slip, slip to no screen. And that's where there's some profound changes which start taking place in your body. Okay? Including secretion of extra antibodies, including getting a better immune system. That, that's all what happens. So meditation is nothing. Going from 20 or multiple screens to one screen, from one screen to no screen. Wow. Hmm. Okay, I will try. Because I have tried meditation before and my I have not been able to sit for more than 20 seconds because I am thinking of what I will do after I finish this <laughs> meditation. The key so, is to sit. The key is to sit. Okay. So, Naveen, what do you do if since you are doing so much of physical activity throughout the day, uh, how do you kind of do your mental peace? So, um, I actually second what uh, Ratip was saying because um, just like you, Sujata, even I, I don't believe in meditation. I used to not believe in meditation. I used to be like um, always thinking 10,000 thoughts which just keeps running around saying what will happen here, what will happen there, how to do this, how to do that. So, um, I think because uh, I would definitely say thank you to COVID. <laughs> it's, uh, it's helped me a lot um, I think I've slowly started doing morning rituals. Uh, the moment I wake up in the morning, the first thing is that I slowly start, you know, moving my hands and legs to become slowly active. And then I try to do uh, at least half an hour to 45 minutes of some strength training or bodyweight training. And then I directly jump into meditation. So I think it's, it's, um, it's very difficult for all of us to, you know, create a habit when somebody just tells you, you know what, sit for half an hour and just meditate. It's going to be very difficult in the start. But when somebody tells you, can you try at least doing a meditation for just a minute? Then we will say, it's just a minute, then why not? Right? So we shut off everything and we just close our eyes and then we say, okay, one minute is not going to be impossible we'll definitely start so that's how it started and today i think i can uh, easily sit at least for 15 20 minutes um, by not thinking anything by just putting in silence uh, everything is silent and it's mostly i try to do a little bit of breathing exercise but i think that's the only way it's it's really helped me a lot to just calm myself down because i think we just sit we start overthinking uh, so this has actually helped me a lot. So I'm more in, uh, more concentrating towards my mental health now uh, to just, you know, stay calm and stay composed. And I think that has also helped me in, you know, getting my creativity out more. How do we handle, so, you know, there are, of course, there's always a long list of excuses, right? So uh, personally for me, uh, physical fitness itself has come rather late in my life, but I am now you know, enjoying it and appreciating the importance of physical fitness. 
Uh, hopefully, I get to a state where I also enjoy mental fitness. But there are always excuses, right? That we will start from tomorrow. That's the first first reaction is that okay, I will start this from tomorrow. Uh, the second thing is with the current COVID situation, uh, we are all swamped with a lot of household work. So a lot of us, uh, you know, many of us have been doing household work from before. A lot of us, it's the first time in our lives that we are doing household work. For those who are not in India, but, you know, have lived in the US, we are used to doing a lot of housework on our own. For the ones uh, in India, you know, I think the importance of all the domestic help that we've been uh, having over the years is suddenly become a very, very large component of everybody's gratitude. Because, uh, you know, speaking to a lot of neighbors and all that, I realize that many of them are thankful to having had uh, all the help in their lives and, you know, doing it themselves is when you realize how difficult or how time consuming some of these tasks can get. So given that there's always going to be that long list of excuse and also the procrastination, uh, you know, is I think the most important. So I think it's only once we start doing something that we start realizing the uh, benefit of having done that. And then we are like, okay, you know what, I should do this again. But the question to both of you is, how do you get over that in initial inertia and to actually say, yes, you know what, I'm going to start doing this tomorrow because A, it is uh, you know, very difficult for somebody who is not physically fit or not having a physical fitness regime to read through so much of literature that's out there and get inundated with you know what one can do. And given that explosion of information, you don't even get started off with even the basics of what you should do. Two, uh, you know, right now there are so many uh, messages and uh, webinars that are flowing around, you know, how you can find your inner peace and your inner mind and all that. But while it all sounds good from a practical standpoint, how does one just sitting at home say, okay, this is it and this is how I'm going to get started. So how do we get over that inertia in our mind. I know it's all in our mind, but how do we get over that and to actually get started is something that I'm looking forward to both of you giving a tip on. And secondly, we all realize that this whole COVID situation is a question of how we are able to adapt to the new circumstances, to the new normal. So while today we may have an extension of a lockdown and tomorrow that lockdown may not be in existence, we all realize that we have to be able to quickly change with any announcements, any uh, differences that we need to do in terms of our behavior, in terms of our uh, traditions, in terms of our customs, in terms of our practices. So given that, you know, I think we also need to be mentally and physically alert to these changes. So any guidance from both of you on how we just, you know, kickstart ourselves and get on with it is something that would be very useful. So I don't know which one of you wants to go first. Rajdeep, you or Naveen, you? Naveen, you want to go first? Uh, okay. Um, um, so I think... Um, the best part of Sujata is the questions are longer than what our answers are going to be, okay? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> well, I I think I will start with, you know, uh, about the uh, procrastination or about uh, getting to at least start, right? So it is hard initial days. It's definitely going to be hard, but you need to really push yourself. But I feel that you always do those things that you don't feel like doing, right? You should start doing it because we always um, think about others work or how to finish the task for others or so many other things that we uh, think about to finish daily tasks for others. It's always others, 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 right? We never think about ourselves at all, but we need to start thinking about ourselves sometimes because if we are uh, balanced, I think everything will fall in place. So it's very important. Uh, they say 21 days it takes to develop a habit, right? I think COVID is definitely going to bring in something like that for all of us. Mm. Like, um, if you ask me, uh, I'll give you the best example. That is of my mother, who is 64 years old, and she is diabetic. Okay. Uh, obviously, she's from the Orthodox family. She's from a village. And they have not taught exactly what fitness means to them. They know that they need to do household chores every single day. And that is their fitness. Right? They are extremely active and they can cook 
throughout the day no matter how many dishes you ask them they will do it because they are that strong i can i can vouch for that sorry to interrupt i can vouch for that when your mother is an excellent host and excellent cook too yeah so i always kept figuring and we sometimes we actually forget um, on their well being because they are so involved in taking care of us they forget to take care of themselves so this is something that i slowly started with my mom that every day every morning that we both go to the terrace and she walks for at least uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, and then she start doing stretches and exercise and after that she just sits in a, a corner and she does breathing for 15 minutes and today i am actually very shocked i'm very very happy about it that today if she doesn't do even for a single day she gets very shaky wow. she tells me that can we just go to the terrace right now and she becomes I, i can see a lot of changes in her i can see a lot of happiness in her because i think this is the time where i've actually connected with her more and uh, i think maybe uh, because all of us are so busy in life that we tend to forget the uh, the close people or the first blood itself right we only think about them doing our task every day so that we can uh, you know rush to work but once for example god forbid doesn't happen that if any mother right feel get sick and sleeps one single day the entire house goes into two right we run around to swiggy we say we have to go buy this and come we have to go buy that and come but we are so helpless but instead if you could have given at least 15 to 20 minutes in a day with them to take care of them and to help them to become a little more stronger physically more active and give their time i think everything will change now she's been so you know she's been so active throughout the day she's uh, slowly starting uh, not to sleep much in the afternoon which she used to sleep before and um, evenings uh, she actually chants and morning she does her morning routine and this is how it's become and it's only getting better and better because she wants to you know become more fit she wants to become more mentally stable she wants to be more relaxed she takes a lot of stress i think that has also come down now so Wonderful. that i think that is one of the uh, very uh, best example that i can give you during this situation like how i have helped her and now she is helping herself like even if i'm not there uh, i can see her exactly at 7 am she starts doing her walk and she starts doing her breathing and stretching practice so i think that is one thing that either you have a community which pushes you or you do it by yourself so for me i started doing it by myself because i know there is no gym that is accessible so you need to start training yourself no matter what wonderful you need to, you need to release those negative hormones just come out of the body through yeah. sweat, right or through <laughs> dancing that's what i do but the entire day goes so happy and so positive and so energized i think um, you never get tired it's just like a phone you start in the morning you charge your phone it's 100% when you start using your phone more and more you know the battery drains faster so you tend to charge it again it's the same way we all think about our gadgets so much but we forget to charge ourselves so you need to charge yourself again once in the evening so that you can sleep peacefully in the night wonderful yeah. asdeep okay uh i'm going to tell you a rule it's called uh, i forget the name of that author ah name was mel robins uh i think she's given an amazing ted talk also and uh, she's written a book i forget the name is the 20 second rule or the 10 second rule for this inertia problem you right? see you get up in the morning like you know you your alarm is set at 6:30 or 6 o'clock or whatever it is whatever time you'll get up and then uh, there's a beautiful uh, function in your alarm clock called snooze you'll snooze it for 10 minutes again you'll snooze it for another 5 minutes and sleep on and then you get up i'm just giving you some examples which may take place in your life second is might be you say that i'm not going to eat anything unhealthy i'm not going to eat sambosas or jamun or anything sweet and then somebody offers you oh it's covid you know sit at the home what else we're going to do we're going to bake banana cakes why don't you have it now and even though you don't want to eat it you put it in your mouth sometimes you might decide okay i'm going to my terrace and going to do a walk or i'm going to do some stretches and then suddenly you say forget it i'm not going to do it now you have to understand one thing 
when you your alarm rings at 6:30 and i am going to be a little crude now but it's okay please forgive me for this when you put your alarm at 6:30 and the alarm rings at 6:30 and you don't get up you have not insulted anybody else you have insulted yourself when you say i'm not going to eat sambosa or jamun and you put that sambosa or jamun in your mouth you have not insulted anybody else you have insulted yourself when you say i'm going to go up in the morning and walk for 7 from 7 to 7:30 and you don't do that who have you insulted you have not insulted anybody else you have insulted yourself it's okay to fall in anybody else's eyes but the greatest tragedy in life is when you fall in your own eyes and that's why i'm talking about the mel robin rules think of a rocket 6:30 the alarm rings think count backwards 10 9 8 7 think that the rocket is going i'm going to blast off by 5 i'm out of my bed once you let that 20 second inertia take over 20 seconds the rocket has not blasted off it's not going to blast off for the rest of your life i'm going to eat the sambosa count yourself to 10 just turn away from that 10 9 8 7 my rocket has blasted off i'm turn away from the sambosa and go away all the inertial inertia takes that 10 seconds or 20 seconds and realize one thing whenever you say something and you don't do it you are falling in your own eyes the greatest damage to your self esteem is not caused by anybody else it's caused by yourself so put that deep into your head that whenever i say something and i don't do it i am damaging my self esteem you don't get up at 6 o'clock when you set your alarm at 6 o'clock tomorrow when you have to take up a new project something inside you will tell you oh you stupid you can't even get up at 6 o'clock what are you going to do in life understand this that there is something which you can do in your own respect the 10 second think of a rocket blasting off and i am going to do this in the next second 10 seconds if the 10 second passes if that 20 seconds keep it 20 seconds i forget it's a, it's called the 10 second rule or the 20 second rule if that inertia pulls you back because see if you are not going to get enough sleep for 8 hours you are not going to get enough sleep for 8 hours 10 minutes please for god's sake that 10 minutes is not going to make a big difference in your life isn't it if you couldn't finish your sleep in 8 hours what are you what are you going to finish it in 8 hours 10 minutes secondly realize that i am going to make it a principle in my life if i say it i will do it if i say it i will do it others don't keep these principles don't keep these stupid commitments at all if you put a commitment live by those commitments otherwise don't live by those commitments if i say it i will do it if i say it i will do it and you know what will happen after a period of time you'll reach a point in your life if i dream it i'll achieve it i will if i dream it i'll achieve it god won't have the strength to stop you there was a movie i think so by salman khan i forget the name wanted he used to say ek baar bol diya to main apni bhi nahi sunta if i say it i'm going to do it if i'm say it i'm going to do it and that is the only way in which you're going to be aware that every commitment you dishonor is a scratch in the painting of your life every commitment you honor is a stroke in the painting of your life and remember the 10 second rule 10 seconds i'm going to blast off imagine a rocket taking off and i'm going to blast off in those 10 seconds that inertia is not going to hold me back that's what i have to say yeah thanks we will all try that i suppose hmm. so um given that uh, you know with this current situation of covid um there are many things that have been going on in many of our lives pre covid uh, there are many of us who uh, were planning to let's say study for our exams there are people who are parents of kids who are studying for exams their board exams have been postponed indefinitely or some of them there are a lot of ca students among this audience who have been practicing or you know studying for their ca exams and do not know what is the future of that there are people who uh, hope to get married in 2020 and they don't know with this whole covid situation whether that's going to happen there are even some who had planned their wedding and then had to cancel or postpone their wedding because of the covid situation there are many of us small business owners who are worried about how our business is going to be affected by this whole covid situation. there are some hard decisions that we have to take irrespective of whether we like doing them or not because we have to look at the future of our own businesses so there are so many little aspects of life that you know are trickling in and suddenly our whole mind is consumed by covid so i was reading some news reports that you know heart attacks have reduced or you know other 
illnesses have reduced it's possibly because we are not so worried about those aspects anymore because we are now consumed by covid and with all due respect to doctors uh, it is also not a very surprise uh, you know fact that uh, heart attacks and other ailments have reduced because i'm not so sure that all of them are just suddenly vanished because of the clean air we breathe while that certainly has a huge role to play but i think it's also about our mental and physical makeup uh, in uh, many of these factors and how we react to these situations and how we adapt to these situations so navin if i can start with you what are some of the easy tips or you know small short exercises that you can tell us how many minutes of a day do you think that we need to have that physical activity going and the third follow up question is how important is the impact of food the what we eat uh, i know rajdeep mentioned about the jamuns and the samosas but um, it is uh, quite uh, imperative for most of us especially you know uh, the ones who are foodies and a lot of us are you know you're at home everybody is together the first thing is for us to start thinking about what we can eat together right so but then i think you know we also have to be very conscious about uh, what we are eating and eating healthy especially in a time like this both for our own fitness and also to improve our immunity so any of those tips from you would be helpful um i will um, tell you a small thing so i'll show you this can you see my watch can you see my watch yeah okay it says that i've hit 2555 steps this is my so i plan my day i think you all can give it a try if you want um to stay active throughout the day try hitting 10000 steps so if you have a smart watch uh try to track it this way where every uh 2 hours or 3 hours take your uh 10 minutes of your time and just walk around okay uh so you by end of the day you need to complete 10000 steps don't do it at one stretch don't do it at one uh, either in the morning or just everything in the evening okay this is to just keep you active throughout the day 10 minutes every 2 hours walk around so this is a very good practice i think uh, everybody who have smart watches i think they will relate because uh, at least in this watch this is a samsung gear s3 uh, in this uh, if you sit for i, I think uh, half an hour continuously or say one hour continuously it gives you a buzz it just says that can you start walking right so it's like an alarm so the more it starts giving you these indications of saying you know just get up walk around because we are so used to sitting in one place and just keep working but we forget to become active right so it should not be just morning or it should not be just evening try to do it throughout the day i think that's how i am keeping myself active every in every 2 hours i just walk around the house uh, walk in the terrace uh that is one of the activities that i'm trying to do i think uh, we have started this on instagram and the community is just built up i don't know from where people are pouring in and they are all saying that you know we've started this 10000 steps with you and uh, it it feels so good now uh, i even have screenshots of those uh, people who have never met in life they have sent me 30 days of 10k every single day and that's fabulous i don't know how this happened right so they're saying uh they also ask me is it only through walking or is it okay if the 10000 steps is included in my exercise i said whatever it is it's absolutely fine but by end of the day you need to finish 10000 steps now this small moment is create is gone viral where it's not become famous but it's become it's a, it's become like a discipline habit where everybody have started following like i it it tells you uh, your conscious mind just tells you that okay today i have to finish 10000 steps can you start walking can you finish can you become active can you keep moving around you know in this way this is one of the habits the second is i always uh, take like i said when i walk with, uh, when i take my mom to the terrace i ensure i also walk around with her to just give her company 
and then I get into. I think half an hour is good. Uh, because I I slowly started uh, involving in yoga yoga practices. Uh, I started doing Surya Namaskar, so uh, I try to combine my workouts throughout the week. So Surya Namaskar is one of those workouts, and I do twenty one of it. This is more on if you are not uh, a person when you said that I can't sit and I can't concentrate at all. I think Surya Namaskar is one of those practices where it will help you like you only focus on the breathing. right when you learn the surya namaskar practice it will tell you when to inhale on which movement and when to exhale so that your whole attention is only on the breathing and it gets your stress level i think to it just drops it to zero you become so active you become so energized by the end of the session and you feel so good throughout the you know throughout the day so these are uh, some of the things that i'm keeping myself engaged walking throughout the day every now and then and uh doing small workouts right uh people who have knee issues uh i would just suggest them to do some chair workouts you know by just sitting on the chair and getting up you know that will also help them with their knee and then knee rotation and you know uh all small small workouts i think that will also help them but the whole idea is to keep yourself active throughout the day whatever it is by doing household chores it's absolutely fine that is also one kind of workout right sweeping and mopping the floor is actually a very good workout washing the vessel is actually a very good workout because you always whatever exercise you do in this when you are lifting a vessel or when you are lifting a bucket all these thing engages your core muscle right that is also one kind of a workout itself so the more active you are i think that's that's fabulous i think most of us are already doing that every single day walking around the house doing so many household chores so hope everybody is <laughs> yeah there's a um this uh, so that, that that's why i was telling about the uh, 10000 steps challenge it's not a big deal at all it's mm-hmm. very very simple when you learn how to break it down it becomes very easy like in 2 hours you are walking only 1500 steps so if you break it down in 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 small bits and pieces at the end of the day you will finish 10000 steps mm. i think so, you all should try it out okay and what about the food part the so um um the, uh, very very uh, i'm not a nutritionist <laughs> so i will give you like um like an outline of the food um uh, don't overeat one thing i i can tell you i can relate because when i was a kid um uh, obviously iyengars we love food we we have all possible kinds of food like from papad to vada to uh, you know uh, rasam so it's mandatory for us sambar rice then rasam rice and then curd rice right it's mandatory for everything we either need a curry or we need papad or anything that is fried or a pickle right so i i used to be like that and i used to love it even today i love it but then i know my portions so eat how much your stomach asks for and don't overeat and it's i think uh, you wouldn't have realized that if you overeat especially in the night times right when you stuff yourself you will actually uh, not get a good sleep you will take so much time to sleep you will roll around the bed you'll be thinking what to do because your stomach is full it's still your neck so you need to know how much to eat okay eat good portions of food eat clean food when i say clean food like everything is coming back i keep asking my mom the same thing you all used to eat so much of rice every single day and still you guys were so fit without any disease how is that possible and now people are going into such uh, like keto and people are going into i don't know so many kinds of very expensive diets and then ending up with so many other problems right so don't complicate your life keep it very very simple and basic food uh, you can have ghee ghee is very very good for your bones right but don't have processed food don't have too much of oil 
don't have processed sugar natural sweeteners like you know your fruits that's more than enough I, so i'm a i'm a black coffee lover and i have it as dark as possible no sugar at all and i don't know how this habit came but i just love my coffee that way and mm-hmm. i don't drink too much also i know only in the morning i need to have one cup and i'm done so uh i i i will never force anybody but i will only tell them that don't have too much oil don't have too much uh sugar avoid sugar processed anything which is processed food please avoid mm. home food is the best whatever it is right you yeah. eat and then you stay active trust me you will be the healthiest great wonderful so uh, rajdeep uh, just to go back to you uh, what is your recommendation or advice for people what will get them out of bed and be you know keep them motivated so a lot of people with the current situation are looking at every day you know people have lost track of what day it is and what date it is because people are not seeing the difference between a particular day and the next because they are just you know staying in their homes and doing the same thing so what is it that energizes you to get up in the morning and say okay you know what i am i don't know whether it's a positive affirmation uh, it's just something that you build it into your head and say that you know i am going to be doing these many different things today and i'm up and about and i'm ready to get started okay two things uh, i'll tell you a story okay there was this um, very famous king his uh, name was uh, king solomon okay it's an old story but it's uh, very famous you all might have heard it and this king solomon called all the wise men of his uh, kingdom and he told i want the wisdom of the world to be condensed into one single book so all the wise men sat together and they condensed they got they went to the far east they went to the far west and they got it and they sat for a year and they condensed the wisdom of the world into one single book now when king solomon went through this book he said this is too much for me to study so he said all you wise men sit together i want you all to actually condense this entire book into one single chapter so again they sat for a period of time they got all the essence of that one book into one single chapter when he read the chapter he felt it was too long so he said no i want it to be in one paragraph so again they sat together and they made one big paragraph which condensed the wisdom of the ages after reading the paragraph he said to the wise men i don't want this one paragraph i want just one line and they sat together and they gave him one line and that line which said it said that this line will help you to go through difficult situations this line will help you to go through situations where you are actually very exuberant and happy also the line was this to shall pass and i think so everyone should believe that we have faced the attacks on the twin tower we have gone through tsunamis we have gone through difficult situations but nothing remains permanent so just keep reminding yourself you might have a marriage postponement you might have a ca failure you might have a difficult time sitting at home but remember this too shall pass nothing remains permanent mark twain was standing with his friend one day and it was raining cats and dogs and his friend told him will it ever stop and mark twain said it always has so you will have difficulties but remember that this too shall pass there is nothing which remains permanent so this covid 19 is not going to remain the permanent thing after a month or two you will just laugh at it after 6 months when you're sitting in a garuda mall or having something you'll remember oh my god i went through this also so just don't have to worry about things too much this too shall pass second thing is just like uh, navin was telling you to have a diet have a diet on your media also please we over obsess going through how many people died i'm not telling you not to be informed be informed but don't over obsess about checking your mobile phone every time who's how many people died how many are there john hopkins university this 20000 lakh 30 lakh have a media diet at least 45 minutes before you sleep or at least half an hour before you sleep 
and at least half an hour after you've got up, make this pact with yourself. I'm not going to touch my mobile, and I'm not going to read all that unnecessary nonsense. Correct or not? You're not the health inspector of the country, and you're not in charge of the health ministry. That you're going to keep charge of all the people who are dying and who all the people who are struggling with COVID. Keep yourself informed. I mean, in your idea, it's okay. But don't do it one hour or half an hour before you sleep and half an hour before you get up because whatever you do before you sleep stays in your mind. You're reading about COVID-19 deaths. You won't even realize, but in your in your dreams, you'll have all those ugly deaths happening. Or if you see that crime patrol and that Savdan India, you'll get murdered in your sleep at least three times. And when you get up in the morning, because those are the times when your subconscious is very, very active. When you get up in the morning, have something positive to read, read a quotation, do something, go for a walk. But keep a pact with yourself. I'm not going to touch my mobile or this news business, sensationalizing, looking at the TV for one hour or half an hour before I sleep. I'm condensing it to half an hour and half an hour before I get up. So that will help you a lot. So just remember these two words, this too shall pass. And second, go on a media diet. Don't overuse the media and mess up your life because as she told you, over information. Your mind, your head can absorb around 24 MB of data in the first three, four hours. And you utilize all that 24 MB of data in actually seeing these stupid news items. This person died. That person is dying on the road. That fellow is getting killed. This person is falling sick. We are having this. Migrant workers are going there, here. Oh my God. Instead of that, see something more positive. After that, at lunchtime or something, when your mind is full with your work, might be you can go through the news for half, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Just keep informed, but don't over obsess about it. So these two things will help you a lot. That's what I have to say. And one more thing which uh, Naveen said, which I all wanted. He told about the 10,000 steps. Just add one more dimension to that 10,000 steps. Or when you're eating, uh, be mindful of what you're doing. The 10,000 step, you know, keep your mind where your body is. And that will help you a lot. You know, in the uh, scriptures, we have some thing called as Maya. And uh, I had asked my guru, what is Maya? And he told Maya is the simple thing is your mind is not where your body is. So when you're walking, just concentrate, observe your steps. When you're eating, just observe the food going in. So that what happens is at that particular point of time is that you're not living a stranger to your own life. So beautiful idea, 10,000 steps, beautiful idea, eat your food, but keep your mind where your body is. That's the easiest way. In meditation won't help you as much as keeping your body where your mind is or your mind where your body is. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Okay. So it's almost 12 o'clock. I will uh, now open it up for questions, but just before we do that and before either of you, uh, Naveen or Rajdeep, if y'all have any questions, closing thoughts. Just want to give 30 seconds time to two, um, two sisters who have actually given me the introduction to both of you. So uh, Ramya and Sangeeta, uh, both uh, friends of mine. Ramya is uh, Naveen's uh, sister and Sangeeta is my good best friend from my college days uh, and Rajdeep's sister and I think they are both on uh, this webinar. I would like to give both of them the opportunity to talk about their brothers, anything that is outstanding that they have learned that they have, you know, been influenced by because they have actually moved with both of you at very close quarters. So, um, Sangeeta and uh, Ramya, which one of you would like to go first? Ramya has switched off her, yeah, she's unmuted herself, so I suppose she'll go first. Yes, Ramya. Hi, hi, Sujata. Hi, hi, everyone. Good morning. Yeah. It's really nice to you know get in uh, get into this meeting. Uh, like just for the sake of information, Ramya is in Dubai and Sangeeta is in uh, California, so it's really late for uh, Sangeeta. But I'm very happy that she joined in. So sorry, back to you, Ramya. Yeah. So um, uh, coming back, like uh, I am not at all a fitness person. Uh, having Naveen at home, uh, he I think I will be his uh, toughest. Um, student. <laughs> he feels that, you know, he can just not uh, convince me or, uh, you know, tell me, uh, convince me to get into the routine. It, it's very, very difficult for him. But now I realize what he said was absolutely true. And, uh, you know, I should have done this. 
uh, uh, he also mentioned that you know people get into keto and i am one of the examples because i got into it to lose as i am very lazy to exercise <laughs> now i feel there is like you know you, you can extend up to some limit to control the food thanks to you sir rajdeep sir i was very impressed that you know when you spoke about the samosas you said <laughs> no to it <laughs> and i am so indisciplined that when I, i you know i say that to myself i say no i will not be eating it but the second the second thought is that it's okay today i can eat and tomorrow i can work out <laughs> i will surely follow this from today uh i'm i'm very happy with navin sujata because uh, he he knew what he really wanted to do in life that's so that's he, very good uh, yeah and uh, he was uh, not the person who will go sit in some office and work he is not that as he is very enterprising and uh, though he didn't he was uh, not very support he didn't get much support from the uh, like you know since my parents are very orthodox and they always saw him as a engineer going to carrying a laptop bag and getting into office but i saw a different navin i i really wanted to follow his passion as i was not allowed to follow my passion uh being a girl they always thought you know it it is not i'm not blaming my parents but uh, you know they always had that uh, thought in my in their mind because they are from a small town it's very difficult for them to <clears throat> you know uh, suddenly uh, think that my daughter getting into fashion designing or getting being an aerostes they can definitely not think of it so they they didn't want me to get into all that but Uh, yeah because my passions were also changing one day i used to say i want to do this one day i was but navin was very focused he said oh, but to- like like he already said that he owes it to some support you know without the support he could have never made it to where he is today right because it's not it's not like he had a godfather in this uh, field and he had to work very hard to reach the stage that he has reached now yes he he really had to work hard for what he is today he has it is all through only his hard work has paid what he is today that's and that's really great i am I'm a very proud sister very good <laughs> thank you really thank you sorry in the interest of time i have to cut you off ramya we all love to talk i know yeah yeah <laughs> sangeeta sangeeta yeah hi guys uh what can i say about my brother there's nothing much to say except that he's my biggest role model whatever i've learned in my life is all through him in fact i don't have to go to google i have to go to him he's a recounter he's the noel and mr noel of everything so for me he's like i just have to ask him any time if i'm in, if i have any questions about spirituality or meditation or anything he he just knows everything all and uh, navin yeah thank you i'm a fitness buff so i keep on uh, in fact 10000 you're saying at least do 20000 reach the 20000 steps 15 to 20000 yes and my day doesn't go without one workout one walk and weight training so fitness is the way of my life yeah so yeah thank you very navin much. navin just like your sister may be a worst student sangeeta would be your best student so we get irritated sangeeta is also Uh, the one who actually helped me through my entire degree you won't know for 10 standards she used to sit and read out for me record things she's written my merchant of venice workbook for my bcom she was the one who arranged for scribes for me so if i'm anything today if i've cleared my bcom mcom it's oh, only no, because of me so you should keep this in mind that because in those days we didn't have the computer and the only source of support for me biggest source of support for me was sangeeta That's, that's just so, a humility. That's very speaking. very nice of you. That's very nice of you, Rajbi. But I just knowing the family also, I must also say thanks a lot to your mother because she still continues to support you to this day. Yes. And, uh, like I said, both Navin's mother and Rajbi's mother, uh, you know, both of them extremely hospitable, extremely supportive of uh, what you all do, and uh, very very forward looking. You know, given where we are today, you know, for them to have supported you. uh there is a lot of mental strength that they needed to have to have you know made you what you are today so hats off to the entire family 
Um, now, if you have any closing comments, otherwise I open it uh, for questions and uh, Hari will take on the question and answer uh, from the audience. Hari, you need to unmute yourself. Thanks, Sujata. And of course, a uh, huge thanks to our uh, star speakers, uh, Naveen and uh, Rajdeep. Um, there are quite a few thoughts and uh, questions that are being shared. Uh, first one, I'll uh, lead it to Babu Venkatesh. You have a question for uh, Naveen. You can unmute yourself, and if you'd like, you can put yourself on video as well. Please go ahead, Babu. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, good morning, friends, and all the wonderful uh, participants uh, of Casper. Naveen, the question is for you. Um, I've been reasonably fed, uh, enjoyed my life right from morning till I wake up the next morning. 10,000 steps, I've actually not kept count. I have been fairly understanding about how much I have to walk, but I also usually stress on jogging and sweating it out. Is it as important as you age once you get to 50, 55 plus? I've always felt sweating is very important for us to be uh, of a good uh, lung capacity as well as uh, our uh, joints be in, in shape. I want you to tell me whether it's as important as just the walking you were talking about of 78 kilometers. Uh, walking is, I think that's your start to the fitness. I think mm -hmm. everybody started fitness with walking. I think that's what has come back now. And everybody are so uh, into walking and walking and walking because when I see people in the park, I see they have so much fun walking. So it's very important to walk, yes, to stay active throughout the day. But again, to in taking care of your joints as in when you age, um, it can be either done through good food, which was followed in your past, or it is through uh, supplements that you have to take in. That those are additional things but to ensure that you can you know uh, because our entire weight is on the leg right so it's very important to stretch as well the more you start walking there is a lot of stress and tension so you need to release that so i would advise that when you're walking try to have a good stretch for your legs so that you can again comfortably walk the next morning or whenever you feel like walking. So yes, five to seven kilometers a day is very good. I think that will also cover up to close to 10,000 or 10,200 steps. Yeah, if that's you're walking somewhere. And is there. jogging must a mandatory? Because I don't see many people jogging. Uh, I feel it is very important. <laughs> so this is very, uh, it's a very debatable topic because any workout is very good, I would say. Right, whether it's walking or weight training or yoga practice, because people used to say when you do yoga, you don't sweat. I think when you do yoga, you sweat the most because you hold on to those postures and it's not a very easy thing at all. Right. right? So anything that you do, you will definitely sweat. Basically, sweating also comes where um, your body type and my body type is completely different. So I'm a kind of a person when I do just first five minutes, I start sweating like a pig. Because that's how my body type is. So sweating is just to keep yourself cool. That's how the body reacts. So body helps us in keeping ourselves cool. And that's why the sweat comes out. Right? So that it uh, maintains the body temperature. Okay. Otherwise, it will lead to heat exhaustion and heat stroke. All these things happen. So just to keep ourselves, you know, normal and, uh, you know, balanced. That's why we sweat. And one more good advantage of sweating or any kind of workout is obviously, you know, uh, kicking the negativity out of the body so that you become Absolutely. very fresh and, you Absolutely. know, you become more positive. I think, I, I think you will all, you know, join hands with me in this. When you do even like a 10 minutes or a 15 minutes workout, right? When after the, I think during the workout, it's going to be a, you know, rough, rough journey saying that, oh, I can't do it. It's so difficult. But when you finish it, you feel so proud of yourself first and second, you start feeling more happier. Absolutely. Right? And we want these happy uh, hormones to just keep bursting out of our body every now and then. And that's why they say either through exercise or through meditation or through breathing or through gratitude, um, 
you know, so many things, there are so many ways that you can, you know, get more energized. And this is one of those ways that is keeping yourself active. Thank you. Thank you. Great. I hope, I hope that satisfied your uh, query, Babu. It did, it did, it did. Great. excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Naveen. Excellent uh, response for that. Next question is by Suganti Mukun. Suganti, you would like to go ahead? Suganti? Okay, anyway, uh, I'll just, um, uh, the question she had was, uh, uh, Naveen, thanks to this uh, reassurance on 10,000 steps, as I've heard, walking needs to, does walking need to follow a pattern, a warm up and then a cardio and then to slow down? Or should we walk for walking's sake? <laughs> Is uh, Suganti's sake a question? Um, I think uh, before you start, uh, I don't know how exactly the walking pattern, I don't think there's any pattern for it, but uh, when you see, walking itself is a good warm up, right? I would say a good stretch after the walk is very important. Like, especially stretching your lower body is very, very important, like a calf stretch or a quad stretch or a glute stretch. All these things are very, very important. Uh, warming up, I don't think you, you need like a warm up and then getting into it's walking is almost slowly increasing your heart rate and then your cool down is also getting your heart rate down. So that's very, very important. You cannot do a vigorous run and then you, you cannot just stop, right? You will have to slowly get the heart rate down. So you don't need a warm up basically, uh, but I would advise if you can do like a, a head to toe movements. Like you start from your head and then you go to your neck and then to your shoulders and then to your hips and then to your legs. All these small movements like head rotation and then shoulder rotation, uh, hip rotation, knee, uh, knee rotation and then ankle rotation. All these things is like a warm up for your walk or to any of the exercise. And then a cool down is again coming back to stretching off all those muscles again. And more... Um, uh, importance is obviously given to your lower body is because you are giving it a lot of stress and tension when you're walking, right? That's why they always say that you should never be like a heavy foot. You need to be very light when you walk. And that, it, that happens because uh, that happens when you keep your core tight so that you don't have a lot of uh, pressure when you walk or when you dance or when you move. Every time you do any kind of the workouts or activity, they always say that you need to be very light on your feet. So that'll, uh, that'll again connect back to your core. So when your core is strong, you're obviously becoming much more lighter on your lower body. Thank you very much, Naveen, on that. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Naveen. Um, Rajdeep, I have one question as well. Um, given that fitness has uh, so many aspects to it, um, it's easily, it's possible that uh, somebody can easily get overwhelmed. You know, when you talk of uh, controlling food, uh, putting your body in motion, keeping your mind calm, and there's different ways of doing it, there's different tools and techniques and everything. It might overwhelm certain uh, people. Um, so how should they put aside this confusion in their mind and get started off without fail and having some kind of a structure to accommodating fitness while having their daily lives and their businesses and whatever is there? I think so. The answer is in the question itself. Having a routine, having a structure is very important. So uh, what happens is... Uh, during this COVID work uh, lockdown is that uh, your life becomes very unstructured because you had a structure, you used to get up, go out for a walk, then come back, then go to your office, come back. The same structure, if we could incorporate it or routinize the whole thing in your home. So might be just like I used to get up at 6 o'clock, I get up at 6 o'clock. 6 to 7, I'll do this exercise. 7 to 7.30, I'll have my breakfast. 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock. I will sit on my thing and just like I'll assume that just like others have gone to work, I have come to work and I'll concentrate on 1 to 1.30, I'll sit for lunch. 
one thirty to three thirty, I will do that, and then I'll get back to my family. So the whole thing is setting a timetable, setting a routine. The whole problem happens when you're unstructured. Okay, now because my son is coming in, my children are walking in in nine to nine thirty. If I'm sitting to work, okay, I'll play with them till nine to ten, and then I'll get to work. Then what happens is then the the mental pressure starts piling up. Oh my God, I'm going back on my work nine to eleven. I should have worked, but I sat and played with them. Then your routine gets so just like you have a routine on your non-COVID lockdown days, have a routine for your COVID lockdown days. That routinization, that structure will actually give you a proper way in which you won't get overwhelmed. Because the reason why you overwhelm is because you think you should have done something else, but you're doing something else, and then that starts piling onto your head. So to avoid that pile on, have a structure. Keep it. Uh, don't have to be too rigid on it, but keep a flexibility of 10 15 minutes here and there but by and large if you stick to your routine i think so the overwhelm can come down great absolutely thank you so much yeah. are there any other questions from our audience today mm, i so have I, a question i'm sorry sure sure go ahead rabia yeah hi uh, so sir this is uh, to you sir rajdeep sir uh, uh, like uh, now since the lockdown uh, here in Dubai the schools have been on e-learning mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know the children have to do their schooling from home yes, yes, yes. how do I make them like you know when you said the discipline more discipline how do I bring in that more organization in them like I'm just I'm being uh, really I feel I am not able to. How do no, I bring in the organization? You, you and two billion other parents on this planet, so you don't have to worry. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing is that uh, at this point of time, I know children love to go to school, play, pull with their children. Now their only mode is WhatsApp and mobile and all that. The whole thing which you can do is uh, keep telling them. The only way, don't get overexcited and shout and scream and uh, make a big ruckus out of it. Keep advising them. One hour before, children see you'll have studied from 9 to 1, you'll have attended your e-learning. Now 2 to 4 is you'll have to uh, sleep or do something like that. 4 to 6 is your play time. Keep repeating them. Put something which you have as a structure and keep repeating them. Don't force it on them or don't shout at them. What happens is if you force them or if you shout at them, there is a sense of resistance which comes in. Mm. Oh, because my mom is telling me like that, I should be a rebel. So keep repeating, you know, keep telling them again and again, okay, this has to be done quietly, gently. Persuade them in a very, very non-forceful, non-intimidating manner. Okay. When you keep repeating something again and again over a period of time, might be 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, Soon you'll start finding that they'll start coming online. It took 18 chapters for Lord Krishna to convince Arjuna to fight. So you can imagine we are all mortals, correct or no? So it will take time, but just keep telling them in a non-coercive, non-threatening manner. Okay. So I think, yeah, thank you for that, sir. I think uh, that I should be telling that to my husband <laughs> because <laughs> I am... I am... <laughs> yeah, because otherwise it becomes like a pressure on them. They want to rebel. Hmm. True, true. I can see that. Yes, I will. I'll follow that now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rajdeep. Uh, there's actually one more question to you. Mm. Um, this is from my uh, colleague uh, Sujan. Uh, he he's having audio problems. His question is: When we meditate, the mind uh, wanders quite a bit. Mm. Is it common? How should we get the focus back? Or to get started off with meditation, will it be a good idea to focus on? like listening to a song before we start as i told you the whole process of meditation is focusing on one thing so not a problem you can sit if something uh, like a song is okay anything but whole thing is not getting uh, agitated or irritated with your mind you know just like you know uh, let's say you have a circle and your there's a, you keep a small puppy the puppy will wander out of the circle gently go get back your puppy to the circle so whenever your mind wanders. Now say like, for example, you're thinking of it goes to your office, then from your office it goes to your colleague. From your colleague it goes to, you all had a party. 
it's okay your mind has wandered three four places now from the party you now you realize oh my god again get it back to your breath or get it back to the song again from your song it uh, something of the li- li- lyrics will tell you that oh my god how what is was it before the covid 19 that you go somewhere else again whenever you feel aware get it back to the point what you're concerned it may be a song it may be your breath it may be anything but the whole time is not shouting at the mind not getting irritated with your mind not getting overly uh, uh, angry about the whole thing gently get it back and from then you start off again so keep pulling it back to the original source it may be a song it may be a breath it may be a japam it may be anything but get it back without getting overly angry so when you keep doing this again and again and again and again it may take some time 6 months one year you will find that your mind will stop wandering as much as it is which it is doing now so the whole point is getting it back to whatever you are concentrating on and for different people it it works differently and the other thing about the mind is that if you do a, let's say a listening meditation for 6 months then your mind will get used to it then might be start a japam then your mind get get it back then might be start something else so that uh, after you stuck a stick a routine then your mind gets used to it then it starts wandering even with with that so keep changing also a little bit so that you reach a point where you don't have to keep shifting your meditation but your mind is an expert in getting used to things also so it will get frustrated over a period of time but get it back and then don't get overly angry with it that's the whole point Rajdeep, to continue with the meditation, uh, um, perhaps I don't know how much time we have. Um, maybe one last uh, question. Mm-hmm. His uh, question is: Six hours of sleep adequate, and can one meditate in the night instead of morning? Uh, by Nitish Kashyap. Now, six hours of sleep. Uh, uh, I don't know. Each each body type is separate, but I think so. Uh, what happens is. Uh, 6 hours of sleep is adequate if you're sleeping at 10 o'clock there is an experimental study which is called uh, the 10 o'clock express study i think so it was published in a book called uh, what is that happy for no reason masi shaimo what uh, it says is now i don't know you'll find it a little irritating but they say that 1 hour of sleep before midnight is equal to 2 hours of sleep after midnight so the earlier you get to sleep generally the less sleep you require so if you see in these ashram meditation center they sleep up by 8 9 and they can get up by 2 o'clock 3 o'clock because and you can actually do that if something is irritating you or agitating you for a period of time just catch the 10 o'clock express for the next 20 days or 15 days you feel that the agitation will come down people have thanked me for this i know it's a little difficult in today's era but if you can sleep by 10 o'clock it's okay but generally around 7 hours to 8 hours of sleep is adequate for a normal person so don't give up on your sleep or if you're sleeping for 6 hours in the night might be take a nap for 45 minutes to half an hour in the during the day time that would help a lot uh regarding the what was the second question she asked she had can some... can we meditate in the night instead of morning you can you can meditate whenever you want as long as you meditate but the reason why Uh, people advocate meditating in the morning is because uh, you are not bogged down by the day's activities because by the time you reach the end of the day there is so much of uh, so many activities which have happened in your life throughout the day that it actually can uh, overwhelm you the entire active but while you are sleeping or resting and a part of your subconscious mind lets go of all those unwanted things while sleep so that's why it's generally advocated to uh, meditate in the morning but there's no harm sleep uh, meditating in the hour in night you can always as long as you start doing it that's more important if you do it for 15 20 minutes that's more than important what i would suggest to you uh, as a routine for the night would be uh, do an introspection journal or a gratitude journal in the night uh, might be go through your activities what has happened during the day and see where you could have improved and where you could have actually where you have actually done well so that will serve as a type of meditation uh, why i am telling you to do this introspection exercise is when you do this introspection exercise it calms you down a little bit oh okay i should have done this better i shouted at my son i shouldn't have shouted at him today so the next day when you are about to shout at your son what happens is the introspection comes in the middle so you improve as a person i tell you the greatest tool for self help is introspection 
so do an introspection during the night uh, that way and then in the morning if you go to 15 minutes of meditation that way with introspection one more beautiful thing which happens is uh, let's say you go through your day and you say i should have done this i should have done something better just go through it very impartially very calmly without judging yourself you will notice that after a period of 6 or 8 months something beautiful will happen what will happen is you will stop craving for approval from some other people because you are your best judge so next time when somebody criticizes you it doesn't hurt you so much and when somebody actually praises you you don't go over the moon so i suggest during the night time do an introspection exercise go through your day praise yourself for what you have done well and say where you can improve it will improve yourself and over a period of time you will reach a stage after 2 years where you'll say okay i don't even have to do anything much and also the craving for approval from others starts coming down so that's what i want to tell you yeah. great thank you and uh, apna do we have time or uh... I get well. I guess there are no more questions. So yeah. over to you. Uh, yeah, uh, Suja, uh, Hari sir. Um, Sujata wanted to uh, ask something to Mr. Navin, so she can go ahead and ask. So uh, Navin, I just wanted to ask you whether you could quickly show us at least uh, the few stretches we should do uh, once you know. Hopefully, we all end up uh, starting doing our ten uh, thousand or more steps every day, and at least start with one meditation after this, uh, this webinar. but uh, for us to know how to close on our exercise if you can quickly show us you know at least a few things that we can do so we are not hurting ourselves in the long run uh, navin you have to unmute yourself ah. yeah yeah i think it's going on and off i don't know <laughs> okay 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 can you see me yes okay uh, so uh, you will uh, these are very very simple and basic uh, exercise so some people ask me the warm up so i will show you some of the basic warm up that you can do before you get into any of the routines okay uh, so we start with always our from our head right so from here you can go sideways first so you need to really extend and not just do this so every time you stretch it is a static hold every time you warm up it is more of a dynamic movements so static is you stay in one place so you stay there so that you stretch and then you relax that muscle and then you come back right a dynamic movement is almost like i'm just warming up so that i can get into a workout okay anything that you hold for a couple of seconds is is your cool down is your stretching so you can start uh with you know your neck sideways first and then you go this side so any movement that you do i'm going to show you some movements but any movements that you do please ensure that you focus more on the breathing right don't hold your breath so it's like when you go sideways you go right so you need to focus more on your breathing and that's how it releases that becomes much more uh, easy for you to warm up the muscle and get into the routine even when you cool down when you hold any of the stra static stretches you need to inhale and exhale as much as possible but keep a single count for all your exercises so when i'm holding here so i always uh, uh, you know uh, time it for 20 seconds so for 20 seconds i hold i inhale and exhale in those 20 seconds it can be slow breathing right this is when your heart rate has to come back to normal okay but in your warm up it's still fine you can breathe then you go sideways okay so you need to this also you uh plan it well saying if i am doing this is one count so i stick to eight counts of this one two three like that and then you have neck rotation even in your neck rotation people forget to touch your chin to your almost close to your chest right they always go 
no it has to do a full rotation so whatever you do you need to do it fully so hold it rotate it fully back and then sideways and then get it to the center so this rotation clockwise you do eight counts anti clockwise you do eight counts you finish your neck and head then you come back to your shoulders go back and forth okay eight counts and then forward eight counts this has to be full rotation then you take your hand rotation full eight counts okay forward and then back same goes to the other side forward so when you go forward don't try to can you see my hand going outside no that is not the way you do it it has to go fully back up and then forward and then back to the center okay so any kind of movement that you do please ensure that you complete it and you do it properly because um they say right i have been working out for almost close to a month but i don't see any results so i go back to ask them saying what kind of a workout did you do and did you complete the workout did you finish every single movement as per it has to be done or did you just do it because for example there is a squat right a squat is when you push your butt back and you sit down to your knee line okay and then you come back but people go this way you don't even go to your knee line and then you say i have done 100 squats but that is not working on my lower body so any exercise that you do you need to finish 100% okay so you finish your neck head and then you came back to your shoulders and then you go to your hip hip rotation has to be fully okay eight counts inhale and exhale again eight counts right when you finish that you go back to your knees go back to your knees you have clockwise rotation eight counts anti clockwise rotation eight counts so finish it and then you go back to your ankle rotation clockwise eight counts anti clockwise eight counts repeat the same thing on the other leg so that is like your basic warm up to just warm up your entire body from head to toe uh the same warm up continues when you do a cool down you the same movements continue when you hold every single movement when i said every single movement up and down you hold it for 20 20 seconds um so that your body comes back to normal and you're good to go for the entire day okay especially for people who ask for walking i will just show you so these are your quads right these are the biggest muscle in your entire body and this has to be stretched very very well uh keeping an example again like my mom uh they come back to knee pain it's only because when the quads glutes and the hamstrings and the calf muscles are not stretched it has to be stretched every single day it's very important they say right no pain no gain there will be a lot of pain which is it's completely fine again to control that you need to do heavy breathing so that you relax your muscle and there is a good stretch that happens so for your quad stretch uh, i think all of you would have seen it bending your knees taking your leg up so your heel is touching your butt so hold it there so that you have a good stretch in your quads okay balance it or by holding a wall balance it for almost 20 seconds you'll feel a nice good stretch finish that and go back to the other leg by holding it in the same way that is your quad stretch when you ask about calf stretch which is also very very important for you uh, uh so from here you hold your um you hold your toe ensure your toe is facing your uh, it's looking at your face and you pull it when you pull it you have a good stretch in your calves okay for people who cannot bend down and hold it please go to a wall uh put your leg on top and push yourself forward by bending your other knee and not the leg which is resting on the wall right you will see a nice stretch on your calf hold it there for 20 to 25 seconds and then alternate it so this is a very very good stretch for your legs 
for especially people who do a lot of walking it's very important to stretch your lower body every stretch hold at least from 20 to 25 seconds with a good and um, yeah with a good breathing i think you're fine this is this has to be done every day every single day um whether you work out or not i would uh, recommend everybody to at least stretch and do a lot of breathing workouts very very important i hope this is uh, <laughs> this is at least a little uh, sujata is very happy she asked that question thank you <laughs> it took oh, a little more time but yeah <laughs> uh, thanks i hope thanks. them i don't do all of them so it's helpful to know yeah Thanks, Anna. Yeah. I would be your Anna. Like you said, yes. you know, you have to close it and complete it fully. Yes, yes, yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. Very important. Anything Thank that you. you need to do a full, you need to do a hundred percent. Otherwise, they don't do it at all. Yeah. Like how Rathi sir said, like when you make a mind or when you utter something from your mouth, you either you follow it, or you just don't talk about it at all, right? Yeah. And that's very very important. so i think uh, thank you rajeep sir i think uh, i have learned so many things from you thank you i will, <laughs> i will try to meditate a little more <laughs> i will try to push my mind little more i think it's very important for us to keep uh, more than being physically strong at this point of time i think being mentally strong is very very important i think all of us should go back to the same practice what our ancestors used to do that is of more of meditation keeping the mind calm that's why they used to achieve every single thing so seamlessly <laughs> true, true. Very true. Thank you, uh, Naveen. Uh, thank you, Rajiv sir. Uh, it was a uh, best time ever spent in the past. Uh, I should say more than one and a half months now. Uh, we learned so much from both of you. It was. Uh, I mean, it's really actually it is extremely energetic after the session. Now I feel. Uh -huh. uh, thank you to uh, everybody else who has been here and participating. Lot of comments have been coming in the chats, and they are discussing and. Uh, they have been profusely praising the uh, navin and rajdeep and we are so grateful so thankful that you are here very humbling in fact one of the person said is so humbling to see such uh, great achievers being so simple and expressive uh, thank you all the participants and uh, hope to join us hope we join us for other webinars also and uh, bye bye to all of you have a great weekend uh, thank you sujata thank you hari sir for uh, helping us in uh, conducting this webinar So bye bye to all of you. Thank you, Aparna. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.